Praise. Praise the Lord. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Praise God. It's really nice to see uh, once more uh, this hole is being filled with people. Salamat sa Panginoon sapagkat again, He is slowly restoring uh, our uh, church, especially allowing us to come and and be able to worship the Lord with our children. So, nakakatuwa yung ating mga anak na kasama natin. Ano? Uh, I'll just to remind you, sa ilalim ng mga upuan nila, mayroong nakapasak na posas dyan. Okay? Uh, para really uh, we appreciate how the Lord is really uh, restoring us salamat sa Panginoon purihin ng Diyos salamat sa kanyang kabutihan and this afternoon as we start this month of October we're starting a new series about rejoicing in our service to the Lord that's why this is our theme Because it's a fact of life that Christians, even Christians, we sometimes lose our joy. May mga pagkakataon na wawala yung ating kagalakan. We start serving the Lord joyfully, gladly, and yet we end up sometimes sadly and gloomy. Why? Simply because joy is one thing that Satan wants to rob us with. Nais niyang alisin sa atin to, to steal from us this joy. Because He may not stop us from coming to the Lord and, and being with the Lord because we are already assured of going sa Kanyang presensya sa langit when we accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior. But at least He can stop us from experience the, experiencing the fullness of God's gift of joy. Kung meron siyang nais na kala natin ay hihinto ang, ka- ang kaaway para pigilan tayo, at least He can stop us from enjoying what really heaven means remember when jesus prayed thy will be done diba here on earth just as it is in heaven so heaven is not just a place that we go to it's a state or condition of life that even jesus would like us to experience while here on earth and one of the re- one of the ways is actually for us to experience that joy and satan will do everything to stop us from experiencing that. And sometimes, he may even use, oftentimes, people na nagpapa, na nagnanakaw ng ating kaligayahan, ng ating kasiyahan. Di ba? As I've said before, yung utangan ka ng isang tao, at pagkatapos makita mo, nakasama mo, at medyo kastabi mo sa upuan, sa church, at naisipan mo i-remind, kapatid, may naalala ka ba? Yan. And parang nagkakamnesia. Alin yung kapatid? May utang ka pa sa akin. Ang sagot sa iyo ay, kapatid naman, tinubos na tayo ni Kristo, dapat wala ng utang. Uh, pag di ka nawalan ng joy dyan, talaga naman. Hindi <laughs> ba? There are a lot of things that robs us of our joy. Ang daming bagay na nagnanakaw ng kagalakan natin. And, and Billy Sunday, a great preacher, said this once, If you have no joy, There's a leak in your Christianity somewhere. Kapag wala ka daw kagalakan, merong tagas in one way or another sa buhay mo bilang Kristiyano. Right? So, pakitignan yung katabi mo, meron bang joy yan? Mukha bang masaya yan? Mukha bang magagalak yan? Baka may tagas yan. Alright? So, this afternoon, let me share to you simple things, truth about the importance of serving God with joy. And I simply entitled God's message this afternoon as Serving with Joy. Serving with Joy. David reminded us, and this is his words, very emphatically, he said, Therefore, There I will go to the altar of God, to God the source of all my joy. Pupunta ako sa altar ng Panginoon, sa Diyos na nang pinanggagalingan ng aking kagalakan sa buhay. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you this afternoon humbling ourselves, once more recognizing that it is your goodness that sustains us, O God, for the past days and week. We simply ask that you bless each one of us, enable us really to commune with you continually in spirit and in truth, 
and that your word will be spoken with might. Let your Holy Spirit now teach us, O God. We love you and we love your word, and we ask that you'll take this time to minister to us through your word. Again, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Three simple things. Serving God with joy is actually expected from God's people. Inaasahan ang kagalakan, ang paglilingkod na may kagalakan para sa sino mang mga anak ng Diyos. Sa sino mang na kay Kristo. And if there's a person who ought to be the most joyful person in this world, is none other than we as Christians. Why? Because the word joy in Greek actually is kara, which means joy or delight, and it's always used in the context of a relationship with God. So the reason why we have joy is because we have a relationship with God. It is not something that is temporal, it's something that we were able to gain through our relationship with God. That's the reason why joy is not manufactured. It can't be manufactured. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo pwedeng pilitin na magalak ka. No, no. Because joy is a fruit or a product of that relationship. That's the reason why Galatians confirmed this by the word of the Apostle Paul. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Meaning, natural siyang lalabas kapag meron kang relasyon kay Kristo. Kung may ugnayan ka kay Kristo, dapat meron, meron diyang totoong kagalakan. Okay? It's natural for you to show and manifest that. Unless there's something that robs us of that joy, just as I've said earlier. So, minsan pa, pakitanong yung katabi mo, meron ka pa bang joy, kapatid? Meron ka bang joy? Nandyan pa ba yung bunga ng kagalakan? O nalaglag na? Okay? We, and it's natural for us as people of God to exemplify joy. That's why when Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, when asked, by a student, tinatanong siya about uh, showing or teaching about heaven and health. Ang sabi ni, Ch- ni Haddon Spurgeon is this, when you speak of heaven, sabi niya sa mga estudyante niya, he said, let your face light up. Let it smile. Let it be ir- eradita- dra- or irradiated with a heavenly gleam. Let your eyes shine with reflected glory. But when you speak of hell, well, your ordinary face will do. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kung gusto mo daw ipaliwanag at ibahagi ang langit, ngumiti ka lang. Ipakita mo lang sa mata mo. Pero kung gusto mo nang ituro ang impyerno, yung natural mo mukha okay na. Okay? Because it's seen, joy is something that is natural and it's seen sa ating mga buhay. Now, let me just, again, I know marami sa inyo ang alam na ito, Anong pinagkaiba ng, ng happiness to joy? Ano bang difference nila talaga? Now, joy is different because happiness, coming from the same word, is dependent on happenings. It is always conditional, it is always situational. It is based on what you are and what you have right now. So, kung maayos ang kalagayan mo sa buhay, marami kang kaibigan, medyo malaki yung laman ng bank account mo, then you have that happiness. Medyo masaya-saya ka. Right? Unfortunately, alam po natin, hindi lahat ng tao na meron ito ay laging masaya. Because if, if, if it's true that money can really bring us uh, 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 eternal joy and eternal happiness, then how come maraming mayaman ang hindi masaya? How come marami pa mayaman ang hindi contento sa buhay and empty pa rin yung buhay? In fact, a, a guy, one of the m- most, I think, he's already the most, uh, the richest man in, in, in Hong Kong right now. Ang pangalan niya is Li Ka-shing. Okay, Li, Sh- Li Ka-shing's net worth is $32 billion. And at the age of 92, nagkasakit siya, maluba. And this guy is very talented. Nakagawa pa siya ng kanta. Ang title ng kanta is Sunset Ballad in Chinese. At dahil dyan, napilitan tuloy ang mag-aral ng Chinese. At ito po yung awit niya, Sunset Ballad. Alright? Pero itratranslate ko sa inyo. Okay? Ito po sabi, Don't aspire to acquire surplus wealth at sunset years. Okay? Huwag ka na daw masyado maghanap pa ng kayamanan sa panahon na ah, pababaan na araw. 
Those who have such intention are rather confused or crazy. Just consider what belongs to you before and after death. One has to wake up and stop fooling ourselves. A lifespan is too short. Tons of cash wouldn't, be a, buy, wouldn't buy a sun which doesn't set. Sabi niya, yung sandamakmak na pera ay hindi makabibili ng araw na hindi lumulubog. So wag na tayo magpaloko. Sabi niya, this guy is the most or the richest man in Hong Kong. And yet he found the reality of the emptiness of money. Ladies and gentlemen, the happiest people are rarely the richest or the most beautiful or most talented person in the world. Because unless they know what they got and what's the purpose, why they have the riches, why they're talented, why they look good, it's meaningless. Kahit na yun ang pinakamagandang tao sa balat ng lupa, I've seen people who so, looks good. Mga artista pa to. Pero bakit kulang at empty yung buhay? Because unless you know the purpose, why you have given that and you're using that for that purpose, then it's meaningless. That's why the wisest man in or, on, on earth said his words. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This is also vanity and grasping for the wind. Meaningless, sabi niya. Yung mga tao na nalulugod ang Panginoon, sabi niya, binibigyan niya sila ng kagalakan and repairing to those who fear the Lord. Pero sa mga tao na makasalanan, na laging naghahanap ng kayamanan, sabi niya, they will just gather and collect but it will be given to the people whom God is pleased do sa kinatutuwa ng Diyos. Mga magulat, kapatid, again, if we base on our joy or happiness on the things that we can accumulate in this world, then, good luck. It's bound to fail. Joy is not based from the ease and riches of life, nor from the approval of men. It is solely founded in the secured relationship with God. Kaya nga sabi ni Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, sinasabihan niyo mga Kristiyano doon sa, sa, sa iglesia, sa, sa bagong tipan, though, though you have not seen Him, you love Him, and even do, though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy. Sabi niya, kahit hindi niyo siya nakikita referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, still you love Him and you believe in Him because there's something in you, an inexpressible joy or glorious joy when you started to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's also the reason why kahit sa Pusul Pablo na nakakulong, dito mahiya tayo mga kapatid, siya na yung nakakulong and yet siya pa yung nagsasabing, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Sino mga sinasabihan niyan? Mga Kristiyano na nag-aaway-aaway, mga Kristiyano na mumublema at nagiging problema ng simbahan. Paul was saying them to them, rejoice because Satan is robbing them of their joy because of their immaturities. Why? Because he expected from God's people the joy that God has given us. Amen po ba? If you are a child of God, expected from you that joy to be seen. Secondly, serving God with joy is also an evidence of a healthy church. Serving God with joy is an evidence of a healthy church. Okay? There was once a Friday school. And, nag-umpisa palang Friday school, yung mga bata nandun, nakikinig, katulad ngayon, suddenly, nung nagtuturo yung teacher, a young small boy said, Teacher, can we hurry up? Hurry up? This is boring. Can you imagine? Normal, normal attitude ng mga bata minsan, no? Boring! Nagulat yung teacher. Pero yung katabi ng bata nagsabi ng boring, sinuhi ko siya. Quiet! This should be boring. <laughs> imagine, as young as they are, below seven, the concept of church and learning is boring, dull, joyless. And I guess there are some people today 
Even churches, they thought the church should be boring. Nakakalungkot mga kapatid. Kasi yung konsepto natin ng church, dapat talagang, pahala mo hindi ka makabasag pinggan. Dapat laging tahimik na hindi ka man na matitinag. It should be boring. They, we thought this is the kind of Christian life that we should have. It's dull, lifeless, and ritual, and full of restriction. Yet, if you read the whole book, the Bible, you'll find that Jesus always desires us to, have, to live an abundant life of joy. Ang gusto ng Panginoon, isang buhay na nag-umapaw sa kagalakan. In, in fact, to tell you honestly, when He started this church, the early church at Pentecost, He started it as a church that is joyful, full of gladness. Acts chapter 2, verse 46 says, Every day they continued to, to meet together in the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes, and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Empathic po yan, mga kapatid, sa Greek. With glad and sincere hearts, meaning they're really enjoying the fellowship. And somehow, I think, we have to be aware that in spite of this pandemic, we were able to do our sharing together, our eating together, even the Lord's Supper, kahit sa ating mga bahay And sometimes it's better because we can do it sincerely, we can do it in a context that we're enjoying it in a very casual way. And you ask some of the G-groups here, we're doing it as if the Lord Jesus Christ is really, we can sense and we can feel, with the simpleness of the thought and sharing the meal, a simple meal remembering the Lord's death and the Lord's suffering. Why? Because the early church was really in the atmosphere of joy, joy and gladness. Kaya lumalago sila mga kapatid. At pinaliwanag din ni Paul yan. Why? Because for the kingdom of God, it's not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And mark this la- next verse. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Remember, anyone who serves Christ in this way, which, which way? That, that is love, joy, and peace. Meaning, kapag ang paglilingkod mo sa Panginoon ay totoong may pag-ibig, nagdudulot ng kapayapaan at nagumapaw na kagalakan, this is the kind of service that pleases God. Amen po ba? So, hindi yung service na parang napakaseryoso mo, para bang hindi ka matinag, na para bang laging dapat tahimik lang. No. We have to go out from that context, or from that perspective, even if it's the way we have grown in our belief. Mga kapatid, I'm speaking to you as a once Baptist kid that in our church we have to sing silently as if pinapasok nga yung, yung, yung ataul. At pagkatapos habang umaawi, kailangan na yukula ka at tahimik lang hanggang sa matapos si service, tahimik lang at pagkatapos nilapas na yung patay. Parang ganun yung aming pananambahan. Samantalang sinasabi rito that we ought to serve God with joy because the kingdom of God is a matter of not drinking and eating but love, joy, and peace. This is the kind of service that God is pleased. So, we have to ask many, many times, especially those who are serving here, especially today that this is a month of service recognizing the people whom God is using or who are using in this church because of their sacrifices and voluntary uh, attitude in serving the Lord. Sino po sa atin ang naunang pumunta sa church at nahuli pagkatapos ng worship? It's the praise and worship team. Yung mga tumutugtog sa atin. They will come here at 4 o'clock preparing everything so that before you come, we're ready to worship the Lord. Even after we finish, sila pa rin yung huli. And none of them you will hear complaining, mga kapatid. None of them you will hear complaining. Merong kumakanta. Okay, yun yata yung pinaka-complain niya. Pero walang, wala ka maririnig nagko-complain. Why? Because they're doing it joyfully to the Lord. Kahit mahirap, kahit sakripisyo, kahit may gagawin, they have to do it. In fact, in the times ng pandemic, alam natin, 
they're not even practicing together. They're practicing alone in their house. And if you're going to ask them, sometimes I'm going to put them in spotlight or in, you know, sa biglaang sitwasyon because I'll ask them, get this key. Even hindi yun yung preparations nila. We need to sing this song, get this key, immediately. Why? Because I, was, I would like to taste them, allow them to taste what it is to serve the Lord without being programmed and without even in the plan. Because in season or out of season, we need to be prepared. Because I need to, to, to allow them to experience, just like the pastor, that when God says, this is the one, even if I'm prepared for this one thing today, I have to change it to what God would like us to hear and say. And that's how it works. Kaya nga mga kapatid, how come these people are serving with joy? Because again, joy is based on our relationship with God. They're doing out of love and out of the relationship with God. God is not pleased with the service that is joyless. Hindi po nalulugod ang Panginoon sa paglilingkod na walang kagalakan. Malinaw po yan. In fact, he gave us a stern warning that if we fail serving him at the time that he's blessing us, he will take away our blessing and we're going to suffer, we'll be under the curse. Kapag pinagpapala ka ng Panginoon at naglilingkod ka sa kanya na walang kagalakan, mga kapatid, isang masakit na, na paalala sa atin, God will take away the blessing and even allow us to experience yung mga bagay na dapat na sa atin na mawala. Look at this passage. Deuteronomy 28:47. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, dahil hindi niyo pinaglingkuran ng Diyos na ng kagalakan, na bumpuso, because of the abundance of all things, da, sa, sa panahon na pinagpala kayo, sabi ng Panginoon, Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will see, send against you. And this promise has been fulfilled. You will be into captivity, you will be a slave. Dahil hindi kayo marunong magpasalamat at maglingkod ng nagagalak sa Panginoon, sa panahon na pinagpapala kayo, God will take that away, ipapaalipin kayo. In hunger and thirst, in nakedness and lacking everything. And He will put a yoke on iron on your neck until He has destroyed you. Sadly, this happened to them because they did not listen that in spite of all the blessings that they're receiving, they're still very complaining and they did not serve the Lord with gladness. Mga kapatid, it's so easy to rob us of our joy with something, as I've said before, that we don't have, na expect natin. But if we're going to look at ourselves, we are better than others. We are better than those people ngayon lang. Isang bagay na pinagpupuri natin sa Panginoon is that we're able to wake up and still go to church while others there can't go to church and worship because they're sick. They're on the bed. And that's something that we ought to be thankful with and grateful with the Lord. Amen po ba? Because otherwise, God will take away these blessings, sabi niyang ganoon. Because you did not serve Him with gladness and joy. Thirdly, why is serving God with joy so important? Because it empowers us to do God's will. It enables us to do God's will. Merong isang pastor nagtuturo sa isang Bible study. Happens to be, there's some kids. May mga bata katulad na to. It's good really to for them to be here with us, no, kasabay natin ng worship. Ang tinuturo ng pastor is about the tears of Christ. He thought that there's a, in the Bible, there's a record that Jesus wept three times. Ibig sabihin, it was recorded three times. Maybe it was in the Garden of Gethsemane and the pra- pra- passage Jesus wept. But never, sabi, never you will hear or you will find in the Bible that Jesus smiled. Sabi ng pastor, nagulat yung bata, nakikinig. At yung baba, sabi niya, Pastor, I know he did. Sabi ng pastor, really? 
And why is that so? Sabi ng pastor do sa bata. Sabi ng pastor, sabi ng bata, because I know because the children came to Jesus. So what? That he came to Jesus. And if he came to Jesus, meaning Jesus is a jolly person. Because if he's not, he will not go to Jesus like you. <laughs> Hindi siya lalapit sa'yo kung kamukha mo siya. <laughs> Sabi niya ngayon. At ito naman mga kapatid. Jesus is a jolly person. Unfortunately, most theologians today portray Jesus as a very serious guy. So strong, so quiet. Pero bihira si portray as somebody who's smiling, who's very jolly. But the best proof that Jesus really is a man full of joy is in this passage in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. At the time that Jesus was suffering, at the time that Jesus will be crucified on the cross, says, sabi ni Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Tingnan natin si Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him. Meaning, he has joy. And that joy was set for him. Ano yung joy na yun, mga kapatid? He endured the cross, Tinanggap niya yung hirap, he was able to, 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 to really bear it because he has that joy. Ano yung joy na yun? He knew that his suffering will save the mankind. Even at the expense, expense of his life, even of the extreme suffering that he's going to face. Kaya niyang harapin yung mahal na araw sa pagkatinitignan niya, meron linggo ng pagkabuhay na kung saan mangyayari ang kalubusan ng kaligtasan ng sangkatauan. He was looking beyond the suffering. He was looking ahead doon sa resurrection, doon sa pagtatagumpay so that people will be saved. Mga kapatid, hindi madaling humarap sa hirap ng buhay at pagsubok. Amen po ba? I don't know what will make you go through that and enable you to conquer that. Unless you have something that you look beyond, then and only then that you can face it squarely and strongly. Sa totoo lang, hindi natin kaya kapag dumaranas ka ng hirap, walang malakas-lakas dito. The only th- thing that will make you strong is your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ and the joy knowing that in spite that you're going through, kasama mo siya, and God will enable you to conquer it. Amen po ba? I've experienced that this week. I was sick for one year, one, one week. At kilala nyo naman po ko, hinahamon ko nga si COVID eh. Tagal ko nang hinahanap. Hindi pa rin magpakita. Pero pinadala sa akin yung pinsan niyo ng buo. Hospital tuloy ako. Okay? Yun ang pinadala sa akin. May sakit na ako noong Wednesday. I was not going to the hospital. Sabi ko, kaya ko to. But on Friday night, it was terrible really. It was really terrible. I felt all the pain in my body. As if, sabi ko nga, if I'm going to describe it to you, dun sa dalawang lalaki na, na tumakas para lang makapasok sa hospital, may pagkwentuhan sa akin. May, dal- may dalang red wine na harang yata. Okay. <laughs> Sabi ko, have you experienced playing basketball after a year? For the first time you played again, your body all throughout will ache. And double that at the time that is really the time struggling. It was not at least yung 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 sakit ng katawan mula sa paglalaro, it subsides. But this one, no, it progresses. That's why on Friday evening until morning, I was struggling. I was being attacked by the enemy. There are some thoughts that are coming into my mind. I was being distressed. I was really pressured. You know how I won? Because I know the principle of the Bible, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So whenever there's some distressing point 
I'll just say, Lord, I surrender these things to you. If I have concern, I will just say, Lord, I surrender this to you. Lord, bahala ka dyan. I don't want to be concerned of anything. I just surrender. All throughout that night, I was really praying. That's why early in the morning, I know I have to go to the hospital. At hindi na nila sabi na, you can't go. You have to stay and be confined. Sabi ko, Dok, pwede bang babalik na lang ako? Pap- meron lang ako gagawin sandali. Ayaw pa rin, Doktor. Na-excited po sila mga kapatid nung makita nila na uh, ang insurance ko is daman basic. <laughs> Apat na doktor ang nag sa akin. And my wife was asking, paano nangyari wala tayong binayaran kahit na isang, isang kusing? Okay. But during that time, mga kapatid, it was really terrible. I, I can't really explain what was going through in my body, in my mind. But I know it's a, a spiritual battle. But what made you go through that and overcome that? Simply because knowing that you have the Lord with you, and no matter what happens, you are secured in God's hand. No matter what happens, even in your weakness, in your pain, in your disease, God will be exalted. Amen po ba? Hindi ka dadali ng Lord sa isang kalagaya na hindi siya maluluwalhati. As a reason, as simple as this, mga kapatid, after that sickness, we went, went out. Sabi ko sa doktor, sabi ng doktor, two days, you want to live already? Yes, doc, because it's already my birthday coming day. Ang sabi ng doktor, ah, now I know. Pero still, hindi pa rin ako pinalabas. And so I celebrated my birthday doon sa hospital. But that's not a problem because again, in a simple way, we celebrated our birthday and give a treat sa mga nurses na maghapong nagtatrabaho, pagod, gutom, at hindi makakain. And they enjoyed it. Kasi nagdala ako na yung Starbucks na 3 and 1. <laughs> ano lang yun? Sa tutula, you can still be a blessing at the time that you are going through some difficulties in life. And what will make you go through that and overcome that? Because you know you have the joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen po ba? It empowers you to continue on and do His will. When Jesus was going through that problem, from that suffering, He was sustained. He was able to overcome that. And lo and behold, we can now enjoy His redemption. Today, we have that salvation. Jesus knew and he anticipates that his death will mean tremendous blessing to the world. His suffering, kung walang, kung walang inaasahang blessing in the future, mga kapatid, ano yung suffering na meron siya? It's simply a torture. It's a punishment. It's a disaster in his life. Mga kapatid, kung wala tayong inaasahan, kaya kawawa yung mga taong naghihirap, walang Diyos eh. Walang relasyon kay Kristo. Kasi ano inaasahan nila? Everything is just a torment. Everything is just painful and suffering. They're not expecting something. Why? Because only God can give them the joy in the midst of suffering. Mga kapatid, that's the reason why even the Apostle Paul said these words. None of these things move me Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I may finish my course with joy. Sabi ni Pablo, walang mga paghihirap na to ang pwedeng makapigil sa akin, kahit mismo ang sarili kong buhay. Because my desire is to finish yung aking takbuhin, yung aking race, with joy. And the ministry which I receive from the Lord, Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Even Paul knew that he can end up joyfully finishing the course of life. Mga kapatid, we can choose. It's either when we are in a situation that is difficult and suffering, we can be a victim or we can be a victor. It depends on our choice whether we are going to choose the joy that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me end on this. 
last Friday, I was not here, but I was watching yung ating live, and we praise the Lord. Napanood ko yung sang, sinabi sa atin ni, ni Kuya Conrad, mga isang anang ating elder, and it's a game that that is very uh, is very famous right now. Sino sa atin nakapanood na ng Squid Game again? Meron? Huwag kayo maya, mga kapatid. Hindi po kayo bibitay. Okay? Ilan sa atin nakapanood na ng Squid Game? Okay? Praise the Lord. You know? Mga medyo bata-bata pa yan. Magpasensya nyo na mga may edad, ano? Hindi nanonood na mga ganyang palabas. Ano? Okay lang. So, alam nyo na. <laughs> How many episodes in Squid Game? Nine. Alright? Hindi po ako mas- nanonood na ng sine, mga kapat. Birang-bihira yan. Kaya pag sinabi na manonood ako, talagang ititrit ako na anak ko. Now, I was able to watch that. But that the nine. You'll never uh, see me watching the whole. Okay? Kasi I've learned kahit nung nasa seminary, studying and reading books, that you just need to read the, 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 uh, the start and the end. When you know the start and the end, you got the story. At totoo yun. I did not watch the previous seven. I think I just watched the eight and nine. Sapagka napadaan ako, nanonood sila. Sabi ko, ano ba yung pinanonood nyo? Squid Game. You know the story of Squid Game? Why it's Squid, squid Game? It's a story. Yan. Alright? It's a story na kung saan ay laro. A guy invented the game but medyo violent. Kasi ang kahulugan, kapag natalo ka sa game, patay ka. At hindi lang basta patay. Pinapakita dun yung mga nabasag ang utak, lumabas yung utak. Alright? Very violent. No? Do you know the gist? The story? The, 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 the lesson of the story? It's at the end. When the creator of the game, ang design niya, kaya niya create niyan, alam niyo kung bakit mga kapatid? He just wants simply to be happy. Sa dami ng pera niya, natuklasan lang, walang halaga na, hindi na sila nag enjoy So he invented the game, the squid game, na kung saan, he's going to enjoy it, watching people, playing the game, and if not, they're going to die. Kaya matirang matibay, yung matirang, mat- yung matirang tao will win the 2 billion pesos reward. 2 billion pesos, equivalent niya. Alright? Now, this guy, who happens to be on the left side, he even played the game together with the other guys. He disguised himself as if he's a contestant. And at the last part of the, 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 the film, the movie, imagine, yung bida na nasa right side, he won, but he doesn't want to spend the money because he's guilty. He feel the guilt of his colleague who died. He doesn't really want to spend the money. And, and faith the, really brought them together again. He saw the creator of the game. Nagmit uli sila yung matanda nasa bed na. Imagine yung matanda. Mamamatay na lang, ang gusto pa rin ay maglaro. Kaya sabi niya doon sa lalaki, look at the guy on, on, on the street. If somebody helps that guy, you won. If none, I won. Imagine, last na yan. And yet, anong kinalabasan? Talo siya. Namatay siya sapagkat mayroong tumulong doon sa tao sa labas. Ang huling bahagi ng buhay niya, gusto niya pa rin maging masaya sa magitan ng paglalaro. You know what? This is how the world is really desiring to feel that happiness and to seek for that happiness. Ito talaga ang takbo ng mundo ngayon. Ang tao'y naghahanap ng kasiyahan. And they'll do everything just to be happy, mga kapatid. They will do everything to be happy. But the world won't ever give them this lasting happiness because true joy is only found in our Creator, God. That's why David in our passage says, Therefore, I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. Walang ibang banggagalingan ng totoong kaligayaan sa buhay, kundi ang ating Diyos. Amen po ba? 
let me ask you today, do you still have that joy? We have to admit many, many times that we lose our joy. But it's okay. We just need to go back, just like David, to the altar of God and confess, Lord, what robs me of my joy? Ano nagnanakaw ng kaligayahan ko sa'yo? I ask for forgiveness. Will you restore that joy? Tumayo po tayong lahat. As we sing this song, let's come before the Lord and, Lord, I know in one way or another I lost my joy. I'm doing things out of duty, out of obligation, but you want me to do it with gladness in my heart. Why not just come to the Lord in a simple prayer and through this song that we ask the Lord to restore His joy in our lives.
Father, we come before you right now again, recognizing that in many, many ways we lost the joy. We thought that we're okay, and yet the truth it is we miss the very joy that you have given us through that wonderful relationship. But tonight, we need not stay like that. We humble ourselves, recognizing that we need you. We need to restore and be restored in that relationship with you. I pray right now, God, that as we serve you, may you find that we're doing it out of our love and joy that you yourself has given us. I pray that you're going to bless us, O oh God, continually. Even as we pursue this relationship that you have just once started. Bless each one of us, O oh God. Salamat po sa iyong salita. Sa pangalan Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please remain standing. We would like to just welcome some of our visitors. Meron po tayong mga bisita sa ating kalagitnaan. We would like, we don't want to miss them. Right? First time nating visitors. Let's welcome. Okay. Sino-sino sila? Okay. Suspense pa po yan. Medyo matagal po talaga bumelo yan. Talagang ano eh. Alright. Si Kuya Benny. Si Benny. Welcome. Si Benny. He came from Canada. Kasama niya si Donalyn. Donalyn. Alright. Praise the Lord. We'll be praying for them. Sila who ay magpapakasal. So, salamat sa Panginoon. We will be praying for them as a couple. We would like to also welcome uh, okay. si Grendel Aiko Katapa. Si Grendel. Narito ba si Grendel? Ah, okay. Nasa labas. Next. Si Mona Lynn. Next. Meron pa po ba? Last one, I think. We have five. Alright. Last one. Okay, nauna na. Praise the Lord. So let's pray for the couple right now because we are going to just ask the Lord to bless them and that the Lord will show favor upon them. Pero meron pa po ba tayong... Uh, anyway, salamat po for coming this afternoon again. Thank you for our children. And we pray that we co can continually accommodate them sa ating pagsamba. Whatever you're going to give to the Lord, let it be given out of your worship sa Kanya. Extend it outside. Tayo po yung magwakas sa panalangin. Father, this afternoon we just bring back all the honor and praise to you. We thank you even for bringing our brothers and sisters here, especially si Ben and si Donalyn. Thank you for their lives. We ask that you'll just show your favor upon them as they pursue yung kanilang marriage, Panginoon, and even do sa pag kaso ng mga documents embassy, that it will be easy and, and that you'll uh, give them the right person, Panginoon, that will assist them. God, we ask that you'll secure every uh, needed documents that they'll be needing to present to the embassy. Bless them, O oh God. Prepare them, O oh God, even as we pursue the, our counseling time. So, even now, Lord, we would like to ask that you bless each one of us as we go out from this place. Pagpalain niyo pong bawat isa, we bring back all the honor praise to you, to the God who's been faithful to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon. God bless you.